the time of enslavement, darkness and violence. They risked their young lives on their shoulders. They were carrying Poland. Nazywam się Amelia Koryczka. My name is Amelia Koryczka. I was born in 1926 in the town of Sohachev. I had been living there until 1943. I had four sisters. My father worked as a craftsman. My mother didn't go to work but stayed home to take care of us. My parents were good people. My father was a very wise man. He was a counselor in our town and worked for the community. In 1939, I graduated from a primary school in Sohachev and was promoted to a secondary school, a gymnasium. Our generation was raised remembering both the dread of the partitions and the enormous joy of regained independence. I can still remember the actual insurgents fighting in the January uprising of 1863. They would live and grow old just like us. <laughs> Back then, it was mainly the school and the scouts where we were taught according to the same values. Also, our home played a major part in our education. And then the occupation followed, which somehow strengthened everything we had heard before the war. In fact, it was the major reason why we were able to act in the way we did. I started to attend underground classes. I was still a member of the scout organization, the Grey Ranks. I took a specialized course to qualify as a nurse. In June 1943, my father was arrested. He was taken to the Paviak prison and then deported to Auschwitz, where he was killed on February the 8th, 1945. My mother moved to Warsaw with us. I stayed at the boarding house at 53 Hoja Street in Warsaw. It was run by the nuns, the sisters of the family of Mary. My younger sister stayed with me. She still belonged to the Grey Ranks, Mazovian Regiment. Before the uprising broke out, we had been assigned to our units. My younger sister decided that she wouldn't serve in the same unit as me. She said I would care too much about her. She insisted on serving in the medical patrol and I wanted to help at the hospital. Eventually, she was posted at the motor house during the uprising in the old town. However, the news hadn't reached me in time. Fortunately, when the Warsaw uprising broke out, the boarding house of the Sisters of the Family of Mary had already been transformed into a main sanitary unit in the sub-district 7. So it turned into a hospital in no time. I joined the hospital staff on the very first day, together with a friend of mine. And then, there we were, me and my friend, running down Hoja Street. The entire street was under heavy shelling, and we were supposed to pick up a wounded man who had been shot at the gate. I can still remember the way the hospital director told us off for doing that. The sisters were looking after the hospital, and they took care of the food and meals for as long as the uprising lasted. On August the 15th, I pledged the oath of the Home Army during a field holy mass. It's such a vague memory for me now. Our wounded patients had fever charts at the foot of their hospital beds. We kept all the medical records for them. We performed surgeries of every possible kind. We even removed shrapnel while the patient was being x-rayed. I don't believe any other insurgent hospital did that. In my hospital ward, there were seven or eight wounded Germans. I don't remember the exact number now. The work at the hospital was 24-7. I was a hospital attendant and a nurse. I think I left the building just once or twice during the uprising. Once I needed to fetch some mattresses from the other end of Mashalkovska Street. And the second time I left was to see those boys who came all the way through the underground sewers to bring me a letter from my sister, who had been in the old town with the injured and left it with the civilians.
After the capitulation had been signed, I had to go on the first transport with the most severely wounded to the Stalag 11A prisoner of war camp, Gross Lubas, in Germany. I remember sitting on the ground in the rain for over a day and a half before they finally put us in those barracks. The Germans decided that the second transport would be deported to Łódź. It was a concentration camp there. In December, the Germans started to gather women for deportation from different parts of Germany. We were moved from Stalag to the Oberlangen camp. We were loaded onto trains, 60 of us in one wagon. All of us could stand, but only half of us could sit. All our wounded women fighting in the uprising were placed in the Oberlangen camp. The commander of that commando was Helena Grossovna. She used to be a famous actress before the war, and she was an extraordinary woman. The Germans kept trying to convince her that she should sign the Volksliste, but she never gave in. I still keep a special gorget as a reminder. It was made from tin cans at the camp, picturing Our Lady of the Gate of Dawn, and I cherish it very much. The Oberlangen camp was liberated by the 2nd Armored Regiment of the 1st Maciek Division. I remember the girl shouting to the soldiers in different languages, French and English. Finally, one of them responded. He was running along the barbed wire fence, saying, We're the Poles! It was finally over. We were overwhelmed with joy on hearing that we had been liberated by the Poles. Next, we were inducted into the 1st Armoured Division. We worked at two hospitals that had been set up in the summer. I completed an official nursing training which Umrah organized in the hospital. I came back to Poland in May 1947. I began to study medicine in Łódź in 1948. <laughs> I believe that the home country is more than just a place on the map or a political state. For me, it's the people that work hard to build that home. We should live in a community of compatriots and foster universal values that will stand the test of time. We can even express our patriotism through love. We should live our lives in such a way that we would never have to be ashamed of our actions. Young, free, idealistic. Thanks to them, we live in Poland. In a free Poland. Out of gratitude for Poland. Subsidized by the Polish National Foundation.